Hi, it's Lerald, and in this video I'm going back to a personal favorite strategy from the last league, extremely juicy but also extremely simple, 8 mod map farming. It's still very good. So I'm just going to get right into it, but first don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like this video, find it helpful, want to see more like it, blah blah blah. Okay, so what is the strategy here? My goal is to farm tier 16 maps, specifically tier 16 maps, to get Corrupted 8 mod tier 16 maps, and tier 17 maps. I'm also getting scarabs and, you know, bubblegum currency, all the usual stuff. I want everything. I want it all. I'm specifically looking to farm purely as many maps as possible, and I am doing that by just killing as many dudes as I can. GGG made a change to map drops with patch 3.25 that made them more attainable from League Mechanic Monsters and non-rares, and that's fine, but it is weighted to penalize mechanics like Harbinger or Blight that spawn tons of dudes, so I still don't really find that I get tons of maps from League Mechanics. I get maps from killing regular dudes, and that is the plan here. Perpetrate a genocide of regular mobs in the hopes of farming tons of maps. It was a success. So just to kind of give a couple of more thoughts before moving on to the specifics of what I've done, I did do all of this in Corrupted 8 Mod Dunes maps. I farmed those up over the course of an hour or so of Tier 17 mapping. Tier 17 maps are better for farming Corrupted 8 Mod maps since they can have the More Maps modifier on them, but they are harder and more expensive. I think doing a similar strategy to this, not quite the same, in Tier 17s would yield higher returns, but the danger and difficulty is several orders of magnitude higher than it is in Tier 16s. The startup cost is also higher as well. Also, you need to bulk sell your maps in order to extract value from them, unless you just want to sell farm maps to run them, which is also fine. This is a good strategy to lock in and just have kind of in the back pocket if you are wanting to do other strategies and you don't care about selling maps to other people at all. You just want to have them for yourself. You don't want to buy them. This also works really well, too. Now, there are several tools for bulk selling. TFT Discord is one of them, it has a lot of detractors for very good reasons. There are others, and figuring out the one that you prefer is up to you. I can't tell you what you're going to like any more than I can tell you what is your favorite flavor of ice cream. I don't know. That's up for you to decide. The point here is that this is a strategy that generates a lot of maps, and maps are not divine orbs. They are something else. You will have to do some more work in order to turn them into chaos or divines or whatever currency you want. Now, a pro tip for that is to sell your maps during the day. I can't tell you how many people I've had say, I can't sell these maps, I'm struggling. And I say, just try selling when the sun is uh, in the sky, and then it, it completely fixes their problems. Also, keep trying if they don't sell immediately. You know, ultimately, there are more people playing during the day. There are more people awake and buying maps at that time, and it can take some persistence, but they will sell. And finally, PoE is a game with a living, breathing economy. I've already said this before, but I'm saying it again. In the last several videos, I've made strategies for like low to mid investment currency farming while specifically not giving a number on the amount of currency you can expect to farm per hour because it's RNG. It's there. There are costs and profits that can fluctuate pretty rapidly at this point in the league. And I really just can't tell you whether you're going to be lucky. Now, a handful of people, a vocal minority, I think, but still some dudes got very upset and told me I'd sold out because I didn't guarantee that I would make, uh, you know, at least X divides per hour. Who did I sell out to? Uh, who knows? So I did give a number for this video, but it will fluctuate. I have grossly underestimated how much this strategy can make per hour in the title of this video. I literally cut it in half from what I made. And I think if you really juice it, you can go even higher, but it's still possible to fall below the expected amount with bad RNG or a slow build. My recommendation is, as always, just keep farming. Your luck will turn around. Just don't blame me if you are unlucky. Now, in terms of what I'm doing, I start every map by boss rushing, and then I clear out the map. I try to take all the player modifiers on Eldritch Altars that increase item quantity and give a chance to duplicate maps. Those are really the two biggest things. More quantity means more maps. Duplicating maps means duplicating maps. I think any good minion modifiers that grant currency drops I would want, like, I mean, Divine Orbs, if you're doing blue altars and you get a Divine Orb <laughs> Altar reward, that's awesome, but rare. But if you're doing red altars, like I unfortunately am, taking Chaos Orbs, taking Orbs of Unmaking, taking Chisels, these are all good. Blue altars are better if your build can handle them. Mine just kind of sucks at doing blue altars, so I went red, even though it is worse in terms of maps per hour. 
Either set of altars is okay for farming, blue is just better for juicing item quantity and map drops. I have scribed Mesa's div cards onto Dune, so I did get a few fortunate cards along the way, but not even a full set. Alright, so let me just start by breaking down the scarabs that I'm using, and there are some new cartography scarabs in this, uh, in this patch. And they are actually, I think, maybe arguably better than the ones we had before. Either way, they're different and they're what we have now. So let me just take a look at the first one here, Cartography Scarab of Escalation. This makes it so you get 10% increased maps found in the area for each map mod affecting the area. This is replacing the old regular Cartography Scarab that was just 50% increased. So if you have six mods or more, it's more maps than before, and we're running eight mod maps, so this is 80% increased maps found in the area. Really good, and these are relatively cheap for how good they are. Then there's Cartography Scarab of the Multitude. This is kind of a theme that they've gone with for a lot of these different scarabs, where instead of having some sort of modifier on the way that all the drops work, it will just add a bunch of packs of monsters that then have a higher chance to drop that thing that you're looking for. And that's exactly what's going on here. You can run up to three of these. I think for tier 17s, that might be the play, maybe. But I, you know, these are kind of expensive. And so I ultimately just went with one here, just not trying to push the costs too high, trying to kind of just juice the number of guys into maps through some other cheaper scarabs I'll get to in a second. But you can tell when you hit one of these packs and suddenly you get like three or four maps dropping all at once. I do think the juicier, more expensive version of the strategy is probably to run one Escalation, one Corruption, and three Multitudes. If you don't, you damn the costs. Just do whatever to make as many maps as possible. This might be the extent of the strategy you need. And then obviously to get eight mod maps, we need a Cartography Scarab of Corruption. These are a little expensive. I think they're 20 Chaos uh, as a high estimate right now. And the thing is that Corrupted eight mod maps are about 10 Chaos each. So if you get two maps in a map, you've paid for this. And it's very easy to get two maps in a map. I would say the low end of any maps that I ever had was maybe like five or six maps in a single one of these maps. So you always are over sustaining these. And the difference between running this and not running it is that all of the tier 16 maps that you're going to get to drop without running this are just going to be regular white or rare, or, you know, just boring maps. And they're not worthless, but they're they're practically worthless. They're really not worth much for high level strategies. You're not going to be able to bulk sell those maps I mean, I guess you can bulk sell them, but you're not going to be able to bulk sell them for the amount that you would. And ultimately, I didn't really want to do like a cheapo map farming strategy. I specifically wanted to do eight mod map farming the higher end of this. And, and that is really all facilitated by this scarab. And then the other two scarabs I'm using to juice a number of guys here. Hunted Traders, it adds a lot of dudes to your maps. There is no scarab that is as good at adding just just random dudes into your maps as Hunted Traders. And then Monstrous Lineage for 40% increased magic pack size. I think this is the second best option here. These two right here, I think are the best you can possibly have for just having more guys in your maps. Now, there are some other options. I've talked about Influencing Scarab of Hordes being pretty good as well. It, it juices all of the influence pack size by 40% instead of the magic pack size. There's a lot fewer influence packs than there are magic packs. So I would rather have Monstrous Lineage, but they're, you know, they're not that far off from each other. Again, you could just run triple cartography scarab of the multitude if you're willing to spend that cheddar, but I'd prefer not to. Now, as for the map device, I'm just doing domination. It adds three shrines. That's like I have six to nine packs worth of guys. That's a lot of guys. It also gives you a lot of buffs. We are taking all the shrine nodes in the tree that I'll show off in a second here. And, you know, that makes the, the maps quite a bit faster. I did play around with this before, including shrines, and I felt like my average clear time was in the four to four and a half minute range. This is not a very fast build. Faster build would definitely be faster than that. But with shrines, I actually felt like it was about, I mean, there were a lot of maps that I cleared in under two and a half minutes, but I would say around an average of three to three and a half minutes is where I felt like I was falling while taking all the shrine nodes. And then, you know, they did also add some dudes. I think I died by a shrine one time in the span of 20 maps, which kind of sucked. But the rest of the time, I would say shrines were a positive experience. They made everything faster. They did add a lot of guys, which actually kind of made things more profitable. They definitely paid for themselves while also making everything, you know, probably like 20 percent faster than it would have been. Who knows? Maybe maybe 25, 30 percent faster. Either way, pretty good. 
And now let's take a look at the passive tree here. So this is very similar to the sort of uh, back to basics two setup that I had run previously that I'd shown off in a previous video, except that we're taking every single one of the map drop nodes in here. And I have switched things around a bit. I'm not coming over and taking significant troves because we're just not killing that many uniques. I'm also not taking ruckus. You know, it's fine. You could do that. But I, w I just wanted to emphasize taking all of the shrine notables, taking all of those, still taking trapping carapaces because ambush scarabs are particularly valuable. Maybe you could justify taking like cartography scarabs and maybe like uh, essence or harbinger scarab, kind of putting your thumb on the scale there. But I would rather just take some more of the like more just having more scarabs. And then always you want to have as much quant and map mod effect as you can in your map. So we are taking all of these nodes like shaping the mountains and shaping the world and shaping the skies. And this is a common question because, you know, if you have all four void stones, all of your maps are going to be tier 16s. So why would you need these? Why would you need these passives that increase the, the drop tier of your maps if everything's already tier 16? The thing is that there is a system in Path of Exile called the Equity System, and we can just kind of pull that up here on the wiki. Um, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Map Equity. So when a map's drop tier is rolled and no maps of that tier currently exist, the map isn't dropped. It's added to a counter, a hidden counter called Map Equity, and this accumulates until it is guaranteed to drop a map. So what what having all the void stones in does is it makes it so that all of those maps that would drop that are below tier 16 won't, but they still get accumulated in map equity. What all of these passives around the tree do is they increase the amount of equity that is generated each time of one of those maps is dropped. And the thing is that the equity uh, increasing the equity is actually quite substantial because as, as it says here, the values are tripled per tier. So you're essentially tripling the amount of equity that you get by having all of these nodes in. I think you only get to 85%, so it's not quite triple. It's whatever 0.85 times three is, you know, over doubling the amount of equity you have. So you're not doubling the amount of maps, but you are increasing the number of maps quite substantially. The difference between farming maps with none of these and farming with all of them is significant. So you don't want to skip out on any of these nodes if you are farming maps. Other than that, it's a pretty standard uh, farming tree, just quant, rarity, map mod effect, uh, pack size from the Searing Exarch since I am doing red. The tree that I have linked in the description of this video is for blue side. If your build favors doing red altars, you can do them, assuming that you have a build that can do either blue or red altars very comfortably and you're trying to min-max your profits, blue is better because it just gives more quant and rarity and it gives a higher percent chance to duplicate maps and that's really what this is all about all right so i do have a spreadsheet and i also have uh, my stash tab here so let's just take a look first at the stash tab here i did all i did dump everything into a single stash tab we'll call it the big dump tab i found the uh what's his name the nameless seer <laughs> uh three times and these were the items i got from him machina mitts not worth much uh piranda sigmund not worth much and a seven league step actually useful for a second character. That's cool. I did get an Ancestral Vision. That's, um, I think that Wealthy Exile is estimating that as eight point something divines. This is probably eight and a half to nine divines, this Ancestral Vision. That's pretty huge. I also got two Forbidden Tomes and a Valdo's Puzzle Box. I also got this inc uh, Incandescent Invitation since technically, I think for this kind of comparison, you probably want to do 28 map cycles, but that's kind of a janky amount. So I did 20 maps. Ultimately, this is in there. Maybe it, it skews things just a little bit up, but I don't, I don't really think so. And then here's where I dumped all of my maps. So just as kind of a tip for players, uh, the standard size of a tab, like a standard tab is 12 by 12. So 144 slots and then quad tabs are double that. So 24 by 24. So each column is 24. So 24. These are all good maps on the left side and bad, ma bad maps on the right side. So we've got 24, 48, and then almost uh, almost 72 Dunes maps. I think it wound up being 67 Dunes maps. And then six other maps that I would say are good, like Underground Sea, Toxic Sewer, Jungle Valley. And then 75 quote-unquote bad maps. And so these good maps are about 10 chaos each. The bad maps are about 5 chaos each. And then I also got eight Fortress maps. 
And just as kind of an easy way to count them off, I like to just uh, r like lay them all down in a line, and then every fifth one I like to kind of set it off so it's easy to visually ID that. I got a couple of random T like 9 and 10 maps for some reason, and uh, a couple of Conqueror maps as well. And we can see all of this here in my in my Wealthy Exile tab, about 17 divines or so worth of stuff. And then Wealthy Exile doesn't do a correct job of evaluating corrupted 8 mod maps. It can't handle that, but you can at least use it for like kind of eyeballing and making sure you got the numbers right on the amount of maps. And then you have to do some uh, some calculation after the fact on that. And so I made up this little spreadsheet here. This will be in the description as well. And I have my breakdowns on the left hand side. My maps, I was using corrupted eight mod maps. I'm assuming that those are worth 10 chaos each. So I counted 20 10 chaos maps, uh, 20 scarabs of escalation, multitudes, uh, and corruption, monstrous lineage, and, and hunted traders. I assume those all at a Round the price that I bought them at, or maybe even a little higher, you know, round up from haunted traders being one and a half to two, for example. Map devices domination, three chaos a pop. And then I just punched in what the estimated wealthy exile uh, div value was for the big dump tab, which 17 divines. I still think that's a little low, but that's that's fine. I'm okay with rounding down a bit. Then nine fortress maps or eight fortress maps, which they're estimating are 90 chaos. You might be able to sell this a little bit higher, but that's fine. 73 good maps, 75 bad maps, two conqueror maps. All of that comes out to about 4395 chaos for a cost of about 1140. And I think that I was running these in about three minutes on average. Now, it's possible that it was a little longer, 3.25 or 3.5 maps, 3.5 maps even, maybe. It's possible, in which case the profit per hour would be a little lower. But the div price right now is 150 divines or so, or I'm sorry, 150 chaos per divine. And so either way, you know, I think this is in the range of 20 divines per hour. Now, I didn't get a single raw divine in 20 maps, which is kind of surprising. I did get a really good, valuable, unique drop, but that will happen. And as I said a couple of times now, I was doing red altars, so I do think that the return on the maps was a lot lower than it could have been. And then there's another thing to consider as well, something I wanted to kind of dedicate a whole section to, and that's singular focus. Now, singular focus makes it so that your favored maps are much more likely to drop, and then non-favored maps don't drop it as, at all. So I actually prefer this for Corrupted 8 mod map farming. The reason that I didn't do it is because we are doing tier 16s, and singular focus does reduce the amount of tier 17 maps you get. So tier 17 maps, when a map drops, there's a chance for it to convert into a tier 17 map. Singular focus will make it so that fewer maps will drop in general, and any of the maps that do drop are going to be the ones that are in your favorite tab. So the way you do a normal singular focus setup is you will favorite all but one of the map you're looking for, and then you will favorite the other one to be the adjacent map. This just increases the amount of maps you get. It increases the amount of the map you're primarily farming and also the adjacent map. And then what you can do is you can farm the adjacent map to get that original map you're looking for. This is just a, a weird eccentricity of the way the game works. It's more likely to throw more uh, connected maps at you than just like generic maps. But if you're just not, if you're not doing singular focus, you're just doing regular farm. You just want to set all your faves to the map you're looking for. So ultimately I went with this. I went with no singular focus to try and get as many tier 17s as possible while also still farming Corrupted 8 mod tier 16s. You know, I think I prefer singular focus. I do think this would have been a more profitable strategy per hour to do singular focus, but I know people complain about cutting down the amount of tier 17s that you get, and I understand it. I would like to get some tier 17s. And also, even though these bad maps probably aren't worth much and I'm probably not gonna try to sell them, I can feed them to my Atlas runners. I've been doing that over the last couple of days here, feeding bad corrupted eight mod maps to my Atlas running, like my good team of Atlas runners. And I've actually gotten some pretty good returns on them. I've gotten several divines from doing that. So I think this is totally acceptable. Like I'm, I'm happy doing this as well. All right, just a couple more notes here on the spreadsheet before I wrap things up. This is also a, a kick-ass strategy for farming gold. Uh, um, you know, it's it's really not that difficult to farm a lot of gold in this strategy. I farmed 550,000 gold in the span of 20 maps. It's over 27,000 gold per map. And these are these are quite fast maps. This also means a lot of um, mining ore, ore for my guys to ship, you know, to mine and smelt and ship. So this has been really good for that as well. 
And then another thing here, the, the ROI, I don't really care about this all that much, but I do think it is something that's nice to kind of keep in mind. Usually I think a good strategy is something that has a return on investment that's over 100%. And, you know, like if there's a strategy that farms like, I don't know, a divine per map, that sounds pretty good. But if you're having to put in 10 divines into the strategy in order to make it work, that sucks. So a strategy that's able to like triple your money or at least more than double your money is really, really good. And, and that's where we're operating here. I also have a little link to the tree. It is also in the description, but just, you know, a link to the tree in the spreadsheet as well. And this is a spreadsheet that I'll be updating throughout the uh, throughout the league as I play around with other strategies. Ultimately, I've, I'm really happy with the strategy. This is like, I don't know if it's the king, but it's definitely been one of the strongest ones that I've discovered over the last couple of leagues. And it generates a lot of raw currency, a lot of valuable stuff, and then a ton of valuable maps that you can use either to run yourself or sell to other people or I ideally a combination of both. All right, so that's it. I am really happy with his strategy. I do think that taking singular focus and really locking in on a single map that you're trying to farm is the approach for absolutely min-maxing your maps for more currency per hour here. The ideal strat would be able to do that probably on an adjacent map, so bog map if you're farming dunes, but that requires a stockpile of bog maps and actually running bog maps, so eh, maybe not something I'm going to be uh, trying to do straight away. I also think that this strategy would work better on blue altars. If your build is capable of handling that, mine just isn't quite at that point at this moment. Okay, that wraps things up. Thanks for watching and uh, have fun farming maps. I gotta clean up these tabs now. Bye.